Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have recently been retesting my shuttle re-entry script in 1.12 because the aerodynamics of the shuttle have changed and so I have to make adjustments. But in the course of doing that and testing various scenarios like from different inclinations and with different mass coming back down, I discovered that the shuttle didn't seem to be able to carry its prescribed amount of mass to low Earth orbit. And that is because I made a slight mistake. Uh, I thought that the different subtypes that we have for the external tank would be the different types of external tank. In previous versions of the space shuttle system that we have had, uh, the component space shuttle mod that has passed down from hand to hand through the generations of Kerbal Space Program players and is now uh, in the hands of Space Audi, I suppose. That is the Space Audi version of the Space Shuttle, so Space ODY, as you can see up there. And uh, this version is different. The previous versions, the subtypes were the different type of tank. The super lightweight, the lightweight, and the, the standard one that it started off with. In this case, with this mod, it creates three different types of tank. So there's a standard weight one, a lightweight one, and a super lightweight one. And the masses of these are very different, and as a result we need to make sure that we're using the right one for the payload that we're trying to get into orbit. And so here I have the super lightweight tank, which is 26.5 tons. However, uh, I didn't immediately discover this. I was trying to figure out how to make sure that the shuttle got its payload to orbit properly and I didn't realize that was that the external tank was too heavy so in the process I have optimized my launch script a little bit and on the off chance that people are still using my shuttle launch script I will link the updated version in the video description but first let's see that it works properly and so I'm going to try to get a decent amount of payload to orbit let's say 26 tons and really uh, the reason why the super lightweight tank was devised was because of the payload to the ISS orbit so I'll test this orbit with 26 tons and then we'll test the ISS orbit uh, the re-entry script is, script is still in the works um, I had to pause as I figured out what this problem was but turns out that's the solution a very simple thing but uh, because I was so used to the old version of the space shuttle system uh, mod, I didn't realize that it was separated into three parts. So anyway, let's try it out with the 26 tons to standard lower orbit, and then with uh, 15 tons to the ISS orbit and see how it does. Okay, so here we go. I have Cape Canaveral HD as well as relaunch sites, which is an old mod that adds the Kerbal Constructs parts for the shuttle launch pad and so I placed those using Kerbal Constructs and we have the shuttle launch script uh, which has a target inclination, target inclination right now of 28.6 degrees which is the natural one out of Cape Canaveral which allows for the greatest payload and we have a target apoapsis of 300 kilometers and target periapsis of 300 kilometers however uh, realistically speaking, we're only going to hit the apoapsis there, and that's because of the way we have to dispose of the external tank. And also the thrust weight ratio of the shuttle right at the end of the main engine burn. So, yeah. Uh, for NASA purposes, they would have done two OMS burns in order to correct it. We're only doing one OMS burn. With two OMS burns, we could, have, could get into any orbit we want to, of course. So... Uh, run shuttle. And off we go. You know that sort of leaps off of the pad. Uh, and that's a 1.12 thing. I don't know why. SLS also did that. It sort of has a little bit extra thrust weight ratio right at the start for some reason. I don't understand that, but it's something I've noticed. Uh, otherwise, I started the roll a little bit quicker now with the updated launch script. And so it just starts that earlier. And we are going shallower than I did in 1.8.1 in order to optimize it. And whether you go steeper or shallower is dependent on how much drag losses you think you're getting. If you're going too shallow, then you're going to incur more drag. But that's if the system seems to have that problem. 
Uh, we don't here as much as we did in 1.8.1, so it's more beneficial to go shallow here because then we direct more of the thrust horizontally, which is mainly what we want to do. And in 1.8.1, it overall seemed to get more drag on launch, and so I went a little bit steeper for that. And so I'll put the updated launch script in the video description, but you should probably only use this version for 1.12. And there are other quirks. Um, I've had some weird issues with the booster separation, so we'll see how that goes. And, you know, uh, mostly it works just fine, but they seem to move in a weird way. So I've tried to adjust the separatrons, and we'll see if they do what they're supposed to do. Now, for re-entry, in trying to work on my re-entry script, the shell gets more drag than usual or slows down more, but then it's in a different posture, it's actually using its wings in that situation. And so that's a little bit different. And we also don't have the external tank in SRBs, so if for some reason there's not as much drag now because the external tank in SRB drag has been more optimized, then that would explain why we get less drag on launch, but more drag on re-entry. So here we go, booster separation momentarily, and um, it's still a little bit more of a... I, I don't know why they roll. I mean, they're not supposed to roll, right? I mean, we've seen them separate. They don't roll like that. So I'm working on that, yeah. I think maybe the nose cones aren't placed right. I need to figure out exactly how they need to be rotated. But at least they didn't kill anything. So we're good to go on that part for now. There are other differences between 1.12 and 1.8.1, of course. Uh, first of all, realism overhaul added uh, pressurant, not just requiring pressurized tanks, which are heavier, but actually taking into account the helium pressurant. And so the Space Audi shuttle is configured for that already, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, one thing that we do have to worry about is the residuals that were added in 1.12. Uh, in other words, there's a certain amount of propellant that isn't usable in the external tank right now and of course in the space shuttle itself and the way they have that configured it's actually more than the residuals in the external tank I know how much residuals there were in the external tank for any given shuttle mission I have the numbers so yeah it's amazing how much we know about the space shuttle we know where exactly the external tanks uh, splashed down uh, where they ruptured uh, for most of the tanks not all of them and how far off from the intended splashdown location they splashed down and business like that exactly how much oxygen and hydrogen was loaded into each one uh, it varied actually uh, so yeah it's uh, it's always good to study the space shuttle if you're interested in studying a thing simply because of the sheer amount of data that we have about the space shuttle uh, it is the easiest one to access information about and come to conclusions on. Okay, we are making orbit there, and we got to 256 by 69. Oh, the, the separation, we are supposed to do an RCS separation, and uh, it is doing it, but we sort of nosed down first, which was unfortunate. All right, and time warping to our apoapsis. So basically right at the end there, uh, you saw that it really has a really high thrust weight ratio even though it's thrall down. And that is what makes it complicated to control where our orbit is going to end up. Now, 67 kilometers should be fine for the external tank uh, disposal, I believe. I would have to check that. A negative one might be more convincing though. Um, we might touch up the intended vertical speed. But one thing that I improved was the way the shuttle sort of wiggles to manage things. I dampened that out a little bit. So it wiggles less while it's trying to use the high thrust weight ratio in order to get the orbit right for the external tank disposal and also manage its inclination. Though the inclination is hard because, you know, uh, well, in this orbit, it's not that hard. Uh, we wanted 28.6 and we got 28.592, so very good there. Uh, that'll be more of a challenge on the ISS orbit, and so I still have to allow it 
to wiggle as necessary for that. And I'll try and figure out a way to solve that. But again, because of the high G forces, we the very last moment has an outsized effect on where it's going to end up. Okay, and it's turning to prograde for the burn. And actually, uh, one minor improvement I did was not exactly prograde, but 5 degrees above prograde. I could increase it to 10 degrees, and that's just to compensate for the tilt of the OMS engines. They tilt down, so it's uh, better to tilt up so that the engines are actually pointing through prograde. And I think it's more like 10 degrees would be better. Uh, I started off with 5 here. Oh, it seems to be using the surface velocity. That's why it's a little bit off of the orbital velocity. We can't get the apoapsis any lower than what we have it right now, the 257. But the periapsis can end up anywhere that isn't, you know, in the atmosphere still. Okay, so 303 kilometers ultimately on the apoapsis. And of course this periapsis. All right, well, we can get to orbit with the 26-ton payload that we have here. And now I'm going to try to go to a 51.4 degree or 51.6 degree inclination for ISS and carry a 15.8 ton payload for that. Okay, 15.8. I do need to check what the actual capacity is, but this should be a fairly close approximation. Okay, 51.6, and run shuttle. It seems shifted a little bit on the platform. I might have to nudge it over a little bit. And the script does throttle down during the throttle down bit, and throttle back up again. And there it goes. For some reason in this version, the stage time is completely incoherent. I think it's because of the SRBs. MechJeb doesn't understand them anymore, I don't know. I don't know why it is. Okay, off go the boosters. Oh, well, they still sort of spin around a bit. Yeah, it's interesting that the external tank is sort of overheating here. So we can't go too much shallower than what we're doing right now. Well, I mean, probably it wouldn't fill the meter, maybe, kind of, hopefully. But we don't need to go any more shallow, I think. So it'll be alright. I still have the script do the rollover. So this is more conditioned to the later shell missions, at least uh, beyond the Tidris satellite launches, because the rollover is so that the shell can communicate with the Tidra satellites. Okay, and we are basically in the same orbit. Well, a little bit higher on the periapsis. We need to work on that. I, I would feel a little bit better if the external tank was in a lower orbit. But uh, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it would certainly deorbit with that periapsis, so... No problem there, it's just a matter of the actual splashdown location and everything. And we are coasting. So we can carry the 15.8 tons to ISS orbit. Let's double check our inclination. There was wiggling uh, 51.628, so that's the difference. Okay, and it has turned to prograde with a little bit of a tilt there. All right and ignition and we are expecting 300 something by 261 as our final orbit okay there we have it and so with that i will again link the script in the video description i hope it will be helpful and i will proceed with the re-entry testing we were getting pretty close on various uh, live streams where I was testing it. We were basically about 30 kilometers away, but then I have to test it not only to Cape Canaveral, but then to Edwards and from different orbits, so it'll take some time. 
But anyway, progress is being made in 1.12. Of course, I was always able to use the shuttle in 1.8. Uh, I'm not entirely sold on 1.12 zero dynamics, but we're working on it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.